gotten into this, I've learned that when you get bored uh, you, or you, you think you're bored, then you can get in trouble um, because you can get in trouble with your thinking. You'll get in trouble with God with the way you're thinking. And it, this is going to help some people tonight. And so you, you, it's going to help me. Um, but you get, in, you get in trouble because you start thinking wrong. You think, um, you know, my job. It's always something else. It, you always are blaming something else for your unhappiness. Well, if I, just had a, if I just had a different job, Pastor Kendall, then, you know, life would be great. And if I just had a different spouse. We've heard it before. If I, if, I just, if I just had a different spouse, if I wouldn't have, like, married that person, then my life would be sublime. No, no, you, you are responsible for you, and I'm responsible for me. So the dissatisfaction is not in people. My life and my happiness is not based on people and what they do or they don't do for me. My, my life and my satisfaction comes from knowing that I have been born again. I am a child of God, and he's happy with me. <laughs> he's happy with me. And when I, when I do something that displeases him, I, I get that oh, on the inside, and I get it right. And so I'm always keeping that clear on the inside. So I live in a state of happiness, even though out here might be boring. In here is not boring. This is life. This is where my life is down here. This is where my relationship with Jesus is. I don't come to take up space. I'm not here on this earth to take up space. So we have to be careful that we don't get bored, that we don't get tired of doing the same thing. The Bible says, and over there it says, don't be weary. Remember I said this at prayer the other night. Isn't that interesting the Holy Ghost said that? At at, uh, United Prayer he said, don't be weary in well-doing. Well-doing, what does that mean? Well, it it means doing the same things over and over again, right? Reading your Bible. How long do I got to read my Bible? Um, Until he comes back. (laughs) <laughs> because we're always learning like if you don't know where your bible is right now problem number one okay yeah but he said it, don't be weary in well doing for in due season or an allotted period of time you will reap if you faint not but what happens is most christians faint they faint with the trials of life They faint or they get so dissatisfied with their life, they blame it on God, and God is the farthest thing from their problem. Well, if we want to rewind back to death and life or in the power of the tongue, this has a lot to do with it. Because what you speak and what I speak out of my mouth, they are what I'm living in today. We're going to mesh these two sermons together. Because what I've said is what I'm living today. So if I've said my life is boring, my, I can't stand my job, I can't stand my spouse, things aren't changing, well, that's what I'm living today. Right. Yeah. So, I'm, so I'm responsible for that. Yeah. Right? So we have to be careful of our thinking. Yeah. Of course, Romans 12, 1 over there and 2 say, you know, be, renew, uh, be uh, renewed. Uh, help me. Be help me, Chibuzo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. Right? right? We have to be transformed in our thinking. How do we do that? By putting the word in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're never in this church going to, like, you're never not going to hear that. Right. <laughs> because, because it's our answer. Yeah. It's not just something like, it, we, like it's this mantra. Right. It's, it's like life. Yeah. Okay? So let's turn over here to Philippians 2.13. And let's, if guys, if you would pull that up, first of all, let's look at it in the NLT, if we have that. And then we'll pull it up in the Amplified, and you know I was going there, right? But um, so we have to be careful of our thinking. We have to be careful of what, who we're around. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and let me say this. Mm-hmm. Who you're around will dictate what your life is like. That's right. mm-hmm. If you're around a bunch of complaining, ungrateful people, what is your life going to look like? Complaining, complaining and ungrateful. And you're going to always have that in your mouth because who you're around, it rubs off on you. 
Pastor Ken, I don't want to hear this tonight. I want to hear something because I got rained on today and I'm just in a bad mood. Listen, no, no, no. The word of God, it helps us. Come on. Come on. This is, everybody say, I, I, want I want this. I need this. Do you want all parts of the word or you just want the fluffy stuff? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So let's look at this. Philippians 2.13 in the NLT says, for God is working in you. God is working. Everybody say that. God is working. Right now, while you're sitting here? You mean tomorrow morning when you get up early in the morning at 5 and 6 o'clock? God's working in you. <laughs> He's working in you, giving you what? The desire and the power to do what pleases him. Oh, my goodness. Stop everything. Everybody just declare. I mean, that right there will change your ever loving life. For God is working in me. He's given me the desire. Some people don't even have the desire anymore. Eh, I just already did that. I did that, Pastor Kendall, 10 years ago, and nothing's changed. Look, look at my life. Uh-huh. Because... You've been saying the wrong thing. Right. Yes. Yeah. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to, and the power and the power. He helped you get in the car tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Get in the car. It's raining. Your hair's all. Come on, women. Uh, ladies, your hair's all sticking out, you know. I know guys don't. But the, your hair's all sticking out. The, rain, the wind's blowing it sideways. You don't feel like going to church. Oh, thank you for answering. I will, I will preach right here tonight. You don't feel like going to church. Your flesh doesn't feel like doing anything. But there's a holy dissatisfaction on the inside of you. There's something brewing on the inside of you. It's the life of God on the inside of you. It's that Duracell battery that can, makes you go. I'm sorry, not Duracell. Energizer bunny on the inside that makes you keep going. It's the life of God. Zoe, the life of God on the inside of you. He's working in me. He's giving me the desire and the power to do what pleases him. So when I walk in this building every day, multiple times of day, I make it a point to put it on my lips. I thank you, Lord, for this place. I thank you, Lord, that I get to do this with my life. I get to, I get to work for you. What a great employer. Because you pay real good. He does. It's not, every, it's not every payday. But man, the benefits. Woo, glory. Yeah, yeah. So he's working in you. Guys, that's a great verse right there. Let's look at it in the Amplified. Let's look at it. Come on, you're going to get real happy tonight on this. We're going to leave here, and we're just going to be hopping out to our cars. <clears throat> Let's read this. Philippians uh, 2.13. 2.13 in the Amplified. Yeah. Not in your own strength. Everybody say that. How many of you try to do stuff in your own strength? How many today try to do stuff in your own strength? I got it. I got it. I can't do that next day. I got it. Not in your own strength. For it is who? God. It is him who is all the while effectually at work in you. And what is he doing in you? Energizing and creating in you the power and the desire both to will and to work for his good. <laughs> I just don't feel like it, Pastor Kim. No, no, no. This verse says he's working in you. He's working in you to do something. It's the power on the inside. Come on. It's the non-nominal status quo. Stank. Pickle eaten. Christian who sits there with no life in him. That's none of y'all. YouTube land, maybe, but none of us. You know what I mean by pickle eating. Right? Because religion has, has shaped them. Religion sucks the life out of your Christianity. Religion does. Tradition. Fables. Stories about God that aren't true. What kind of story have you heard lately? Well, God doesn't heal anymore. And God took my baby. And God put the sickness on this person. And God did this and God did that. No, no, no. Those are lies about my God. His character. He is a good God. He is a great God. He is the healer. He's my Savior. He saved me. He healed me. 
No, 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 don't talk about him like that. No, no, no. So not in your own strength. For it is God who is all the while effectually at work in me, energizing and creating in me the power and the desire. Right there, I just could run a lap. I have my tennis shoes on tonight. I could. Mm -hmm. Energizing and creating in me the power and the desire, both to will. I'm letting this just brew and just simmer and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. Praise God. May we just go home on that. Woo. So we don't want to live in the status quo. We have, there's a holy dissatisfaction on the inside of y'all. I tell you, it's on the inside of me. I never want to just stay at the same place in my life. Well, pastor, I've been a Christian for 40 years. Great. Have you ever rocked the boat? Have you ever heard the song, Rock the Boat? <laughs> rock the boat, rock the boat. I mean, you guys remember that song? Yes. Do, does, has anybody ever, do you, have you ever just gotten a little hungry for God? Mm-hmm. Have you ever rocked that boat a little bit? Yes. I'm, I need you, God. Yes. I want more. Yes. I'm tired of the way things have been. I'm going to seek you. I'm going to seek your face until I find what I'm looking for. (laughs) And you can fast and pray and do that. And he'll answer you. Yeah. Yeah. He's good. So breaking out of the status quo. Rocking the boat. Have your own personal revival. You be the revival. Who's that? That's, That's a revival right there. You be the one. I just want a shirt like that that says, be the one. Because so many people need to be the one. You carry it with you. Carry revival with you. Amen. So, y'all, God is doing a work in us. He's doing a work in us. He's doing a work in this church. He's doing a work with all ages. And he's calling us to step up into some things. And he's, I don't know about if you guys have noticed this, but there's been a change. There has been a change. And uh, a good change. Yeah, yeah. There's been a good change. And God is doing great things. And you think, I'm sitting here on a Wednesday night, I don't feel anything. You don't need to even feel it. You don't even need to see it with your own eyes, physical eyes, but you sense it. You know it. And a lot of you in here are responsible for a lot of that because of your prayers. And I'm here to tell you tonight that God is pleased with your prayers, with with you seeking him about this place. You know why? Because the plan matters. And if you take his plan seriously, how much he's going to turn around and take your plan seriously, isn't he? You make his dream come true and he'll make your dream come true. Right. He's, not playing, he's not playing patty cake. Right, right. He's not playing Christianity 101. Do, do, do. No, he, he's in it. For, we're in it for the long haul, y'all. Yeah. We're in it for the real, we're, the real deal. Yeah. Christians that love him, that have a passion yeah. to follow him with everything in them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. I am my own personal revival. I just can preach all night. He's always calling us to step up. He's inviting us to experience him and, and uh, enjoy his manifest presence. He wants us to want to be in his presence. Have you ever been around people and you can tell, you can tell they, they're really not there? Sometimes I get like that. You ever get like that? Like somebody's talking and you're like zoned out in a different, like, Yeah. You, 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 you're li- watching their lips move, but you're like not there. Yeah. Like the lights are on and nobody's home. Yeah. So, you know, but God, he, he knows our hearts, right? So he sees and he knows on the inside when you're really interested or not. Or if you're in church playing Angry Birds. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Or text, texting somebody or Snapchatting. Yeah. Come on, he knows. Yeah, right. If your heart's engaged in church, yeah. right? My deal is, this is my thing. Why even come if you're going to sit there and do that? I mean, like, I'm, my personality is, if I'm there, I'm all in. Yes. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm all in it, right? I'm 100%, right? That's just, and that is my personality, too, right? So he wants us to be all in. He wants us to be fully engaged 
in his plan and what he has and what is important to him. Fully engaged. Hunger. Let's turn over here. You guys still with me? Yes. Let's look at this. Matthew 5, 6. Matthew 5, 6. I know you guys can quote these things, but we're going to look at them. What are we talking about? Holy dissatisfaction. Not being satisfied with where you are in life. You know, I just, I go to work every day, Pastor Kendall, and my life is just grand. Well, maybe I can rock your boat tonight. Maybe I can shake it up a little bit, right? Maybe the Word of God here will show, show us some things where you just want to, you just want to like do something different. Not, you know, I'm not saying get, I'm not saying move to Mexico or anything. I'm just saying, I'm saying there's a, there's a, a desire on the inside for more of the things of God. Yes. And there's an engagement in it. <clears throat> Matthew 5, 6 says, blessed are they. Oh, you're going to, can you guys just, yeah, I'll read it in that in just a minute. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after what? Right. Righteousness. Righteousness. For they what? Be <laughs> they shall be, you, but you just don't know. You just don't know what I've been going through, Pastor Kendall. I've been so busy and there's just been so much going on and, and you just don't know my kids and you don't know the dog threw up this morning and the washing machine and my cats had a hairball. And, and I mean, it's just been on, Pastor Kendall. It's just been on. And there's just been so much going on. Did you know that that absolutely has, those are circumstances outwardly. Did you know that absolutely has no bearing on your inward person in here, your inward man? Nothing. Nothing to do with God on the inside of you. So I, I coined this a little while ago. I just called it going indoors. So when things are crazy out here, like they were today. Yeah. If you guys just had a little while, I can tell you. But if they, when things get crazy out here, I go indoors. Yeah. I go in here. I turn inwardly to where the Spirit of God is. Because I can't get my help out here. What do you think I should do? Who cares? Who cares what, I mean, seriously. Go indoors. Go inwardly in, on the inside where the spirit of the living God is, where he said, how be it when the spirit of truth has come, he'll guide you into all truth. He won't speak of himself, but he'll show you things to come. Because what was that first verse we read? When you try to figure it out here, you're, try, you're trying to do it all in your own strength. I, I'll, I know, I just, I'll lay in bed and I'll just figure it out. I'll just figure it out. And smoke starts coming out. And your spouse says, what is that? Because <laughs> there's so much smoke. You can't figure it out in your head, y'all. We can't figure it out. No, we go indoors. And I say, I say, Lord, I thank you that my strength, that my help, and everything I need comes from you. And I just learned, I've just learned to chuckle and laugh. Is that the best you have? Really? Come on. You know? And I learned to not pay attention as much and put much wordage on what's going on out here. And I just continue to talk about what he's doing. And the more you do that, the more you take the emphasis off the enemy and what he's trying to do in your life, and you turn it and you put it praise on your lips, your situation starts to change because he gets, he gets, he's impatient. The enemy is impatient and he's throwing all this stuff at you and you're not even taking any of the bait. And you're like, praise you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you're working in our lives. I thank you, Lord, that the end result is I win. <laughs> and you just get all happy and you're indoors. You're not thinking about it in your head. You're not trying to, to figure it out. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness or right standing or right living or that, that image that God's given to us because he's already done it. The child of God. I am a child of God. Blessed are those that focus on that, that are hungry for that, for they shall be filled. I'm going to be filled. When I feel empty and I won't go around and ask for hands tonight because I probably get a lot of them. If you feel empty on E, whose responsibility is it for you to get filled? How do we stir it up? What's the chocolate milk stirring stick? 
la, 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 right? My tongue, right? I got to speak it out, right? I got to say, you know, I, I start praising him. We could just go through Psalms tonight, the book of Psalms. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who heals all my diseases. He forgives all my sins. <laughs> You could just start talking about praise on your lips. Oh, enter his courts with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise or whatever that verse is over there in Psalms. Psalms, talking about praise and worshiping him and honoring him. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. So blessed are those which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Psalms 84. Let's look at this one. <laughs> Nobody wants to live in status quo. Nobody. I don't. I don't. But some people do, I guess. I guess. Ah, praise God. Living in his presence, living in that place, it, it makes life sweet. It just makes life sweet. When you just get out of your comfort zone, you just get out of that place where you normally are. Some people, they're scared to get out of their comfort zone. They just don't want to step out over that comfort zone. They, they, there's a place that we can step out into in the things of God where he is our only thing. You know, I, can't, I can't tangibly hold on to anything in the natural anymore because people change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things change. Uh -huh. You know what? Tomorrow things are going to change again. Amen. <laughs> and unfortunately, things are changing rapidly. Uh -huh. I can count grays. How many can count grace in here? <laughs> you know, just life happens. We won't always look the way we look. We can try, but life happens. Time happens. But guess what happens? It says, though the outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. Though the outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. How? Here, a holy dissatisfaction for nothing more than I just want to know what you have for my life, God. I'm hungry for that. I'm thirsty for that. That's why I love your house. I love that Planet Shaker's new song, The House of the Lord. Not the one we sing, but a new one they just came out with. I love that song. There's no place I'd rather be than in your house, God. No place. What is that verse over there? I think it's in Psalms. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to live in the tents of the wicked. I'd rather just be a greeter. I'm going to just call that a greeter. <laughs> I'd rather be a greeter in the house of God what, than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Because I love him. I love his house. I love his people. Amen. A holy dissatisfaction. Praise God. So Psalms 84. Ooh, Jesus. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, it faints, for the courts of the Lord. Listen to this. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house ever what? Ever singing your... I'm in verse 4, sorry. Blessed are those who dwell in your house ever singing what? Your praise. Oh, my goodness. So is it okay to stay in there in church? It says blessed are those who dwell in your house. That's where we are. And they will still be praising you, that, that version. But this version says blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Yes. Amen. Your praise shall ever be on my lips. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that song, too. How lovely is your dwelling place? Let's read that in the Amplified, if we could, y'all. Um, in one, just start in one for me. How lovely are your tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul yearns. That's not just standing there going, have you ever like wanted a piece of cake or like some ice cream? Maybe when you're a kid, you can remember doing this. And you're just like jumping up and down. You know, you were standing there and you're like, oh, I want to be, you know, because you're so excited because you, okay, maybe I'm talking to the wrong people. Andrea. Have, no. <laughs> so my soul, you yearn for it. You want it, right? Yes. Yeah, my soul yearns. Yes, even pines or, and is homesick mm -hmm. for the house of the Lord, for the courts of the Lord. Yes. My heart and my flesh cry out yes. <laughs> and sing for joy to the living God. Yes. 
There's something in that. There is, there is, that's wordage of somebody who is not just an observer. They don't just sit there and observe. Yeah, I go to church. Yeah. They're a participator. Okay, let me, let me just drop this one on you, okay? Because this, I like football, okay? I know I'm a woman, but I really like football. And I've always liked football. Oh, thank you, thank you. I really like football. And football season's getting ready to start, and I'm really excited about it because I like Georgia, and Georgia's my team. And, and so I like, I like college football. Okay, so, you know, when you have a football game, you have people that pay to go to the game, right? right. And what are those people called? Fans or what? Spectators, right? They pay to get in, and then they sit there, and then they're like, yay, right? But who are the real people that do the work? The people, the team, those that are, that, that are they don't get paid to do that, right? So God doesn't want us to just be a spectator sitting up in the stands in the house of God or in any part of our life. He wants us to be down on the field, hey, 42, hut. Right? Go out for a pass. Right? And so I'm talking to the choir tonight because all of you, I'm looking around this room, you're involved. You, you, you have your hand to do something. You're involved. You're, you're on the team. And, and so I'm talking to you too. But, you know, as far as being a spectator, we don't want to be spectators. So the more that we're participators when we come in, that holy dissatisfaction on the inside says, I want something more, God. I went on Wednesday. I got some answers. I've been, I've been looking at those verses. I've been meditating on them. And now it's Sunday. It, it, I'm, get, I'm getting all I'm going to get. I'm getting filled up on Sunday. And so you're driving, to, you're driving to church, and you're all excited. Yes, God's going to move today in my church. So you come in, and you're all excited because why? On the inside, you know you're bringing something. You're a, you're a participator, not a spectator. Spectators... Don't get anything. That's right. It's that nice little, you know, what, what are the refill cups? Yeah. You can get a refill cup. <laughs> but what happens to the team? What do they get? Yeah. They get the jersey. Yeah. They get the helmet. Yeah. They get the pads. They get the ring when they, uh, that's Super Bowl. But they get the ring. Do they get, does anybody know in college, do they get a ring? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they do? They get stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. How many of you like stuff? I like stuff. I like to get stuff in the mail. I like Amazon. I, I like to get, that's the commercial. The, I like to get stuff in the mail. I like to open it up and it has my name on it. I'm like, oh, right? So we want to be participators and not spectators. The more participators we have, the more the God can move in our services. The less people are going to get water and going, you know, looking in the bathroom at their phone and stuff like that. Ooh, the more that, no, the more that we're doing the, the things that we know to do and we're in, 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 all together in one accord, what happens? He can move in our, in our services. Yes. Of course, we could do a whole service on honoring the things of God. Yeah. A lost art. Yeah. Where's honor gone? There's no honor for policemen. There's no honor for anybody. There's no honor for teachers. Where has honor gone? My goodness, we won't get off on that. Got quiet, but a holy dissatisfaction. So blessed are those that, uh, uh, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, it even faints for the courts of the Lord. Yeah, how about get up on a Sunday morning and say, you know what? I feel like I'm all faint if I don't get to church. <laughs> I got to get to church. Hallelujah. So let's go on here. I haven't even got to my first point. We're only going to get to one point tonight. So in a holy dissatisfaction, number one here, we need to experience him every day, yes. not just at church on Sundays or Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. How many of you want to experience him every day? Yeah. Yeah. Like when I say experience him, you know he's with you. Yeah. You, 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 you have a, a working relationship with him. Yeah. You, you know he's speaking to you on the inside. You know, I, I remember one time I said something. I, I can't remember exactly what it was I said, but I said something to the fact of that God spoke to my heart and blah, blah, blah. And this guy goes, God spoke to your heart? God didn't speak to people. And I thought, what planet are you on? <laughs> like, you're a Christian and you're saying, you know what, yeah. help me. Help me with that statement. Yeah. 
Because if you don't even, if God doesn't even speak to your heart about things, if you're not, you don't even know how to be led by the spirit of God, what kind of relation? It's just a dead religion to you. You just have a free ticket to go to heaven. But there's so much more beyond the cross. Come on. Come on. It's not just, cross is not a destination. The cross. Oh, the cross. Yes, I'm thankful that he died on the cross. But beyond the cross, man, he, there's so much more. There's so much more. And so we can have a relationship with him so we can experience him every day. So how can I experience Jesus every day? How can I do that? Let's look at, uh, let's look at Philippians 3.12. And we'll end on this tonight because I know you guys have to row back home. So Philippians 3.12. Philippians 3.12 here. And let's look at that in the Amplified. I hear pages moving, so we'll wait there. Philippians 3.12, and it says, Not that I have now attained this ideal or have already been made perfect, but I press on to lay hold of or grasp and make my own, I know it's pretty wordy, that for which Christ Jesus has laid a hold of me and made me his own. He's saying, look, huh. not that I've already arrived. I have not arrived, but I'm doing this one thing. I'm going to press and I'm going to go forward and I'm going to grasp. I'm going to grab a hold of and make my own and get a hold of that which he laid hold of me for. That doesn't show somebody who's just sitting by going, oh, that was great. Thank you. It's Jesus. Thank you. That shows determination. That shows action. That shows movement. The worst thing that could ever happen is the older you get, the less and less interested in Jesus you get. That's a cry in shame. The older I get, the more I want to know him so that I can teach the younger generation so I can impart something to them so that they can be raised up and they can tell their generation. Right. It's generational, y'all. Yeah. This is not just about your nice little life and how you go to work. Our lives matter to the next generation. We impart to people. Yeah. My life is an impartation to people. Yeah. What I have has been given to me and entrusted to me yeah. so I can give to other people. What you've been given and been allowed to be a part of here in this church. I mean, think about what God is. It's so wonderful. Yes. The word we hear, pastor, is awesome. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And we've been given that, and so we're keepers. Yeah. I mean, you got the anointing on the inside of you. How many times have you had hands laid on you? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Does anybody have a calculator? No. <laughs> How many times? Yeah. Many, many. Everybody say many. many. I mean, so is, are there things on the inside of you? Yeah. Okay, but it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't matter what you feel. God, the greater one, lives on the inside of us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's um, 13? Sorry, I, I got off on 12. Here, 13. <clears throat> I do not consider, brethren, that I have captured and made it my own yet, but one thing I do, it's my one aspiration. Everybody say my one aspiration. All I want on my tombstone, and I'm not even going to have one. So, But if, if for some reason, all I want on there, did I please him? I pleased him. Did you please him? Did you do what he asked you to do? Well, I just couldn't figure it out. I was trying to do. No, don't try to do somebody else's thing. Do what he's asked you to do. Put your hand to what he, had you, he asked you to do and do it with all your might, and then he'll promote you. Amen. Uh, my one aspiration, forgetting what, everybody say forgetting, forgetting. what lies behind, what lies behind. and straining forward, forward to what lies ahead. Movement, action, Hallelujah. holy dissatisfaction. I'm not going to sit here. Why sit here till we die? I ain't dying, brother, sister. I'm going forward. You can't. No, I don't care what come down, comes down the pike. I don't care what everybody, they, they try. They can, they can try every very, they can try everything. They are not going to shut the church down. They're not going to shut your mouth. They're not going to put those things on us. No, we are the church of the living God and we have him on the inside of us. And greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Hey, hey, you can erase that off if you want to. I don't care. <laughs> 
Yes. But he's not stopping us. Yes. The enemy is not powerful enough to stop you unless you stop yourself. Yes. Yes. Unless you sit down, think about during the last three years, look at the state of the church. Sunday, we were full. Many people added to the church. God is doing great things, but sadly, many churches are closing. Sadly, because we need everybody on board. How hungry are we? How thirsty are we to go forward with what we have? I don't, don't always just be looking at, oh, I just, if I just had that. No, no, no. You have enough in you right now to start a big fire. Yeah, that's right. You've got enough in you to start. You know those things, you know, what are they called? And they have a lot, they're long and they go, and the light comes out, the fire. Two words. No. Um, you know what I'm talking about? It's a lighter and it has a long stick on it thing. A lot of, yeah, yeah. So, you know, some people. Some people have those almost like because the flame comes out big. Some people just have this little match and they're trying to, they got wet, wet matches and they're like, and the enemy's over here throwing darts at them and they're like, the enemy's over there saying all this stuff and they're trying to light wet, wet matches. No, no, no. We've got the power of God on the inside of us. I mean, just listening to this tonight ought to make you run around your house. Ought to make you happy that the greater ones on the inside of us, we can, we, we can beat anything that comes at us. Amen. Because how many of you know he tries the pilot routine? The enemy tries the pilot routine. He'll try everything, everything, but he can't, he doesn't win. He can't win. If we'll keep going, we win. Amen. Why don't y'all stand up with me tonight? Hallelujah.